Hey guys, Coach Jacks here. Uh, wanted to uh, put a uh, video out right here just to uh, talk about defending RPOs. I think RPOs are the the new rage now. We've had some uh, some good conversations on Twitter lately. Uh, of course, Coach Singleton and Coach Rowe uh, just put out their new ebook, and uh, guys, go check that out. It's only nine ninety nine, so it's a great deal. Uh, I haven't had a chance to read through it uh, just yet, but uh, planning on doing it. Uh, but I have read through the uh, the free content that they put out, which is Chapter One, which is their gum gum concept. And uh, you know everybody is interested in running RPOs now, but I haven't saw a lot of things on how to defend RPOs unless uh, you know somebody says play man coverage, and that's that's going to solve it, and and that can uh, be a fix. But you don't want to get caught into having to play uh, man coverage all night long. So I uh, just wanted to um, you know use some of the Concepts that they present in the in the book, especially the gum concept, um, and just talk about how how I would defend it. And um, you know, uh, this, these things are always evolving, right? So um, you know, offenses figure out something new, and defenses have to catch up. And then when the defense catch up, offenses have to do something else. So uh, you know, that's kind of the situation that we're in now. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, ideas out there about how to defend these things besides just playing man to man. And so I wanted to give you some ideas. You know, they may not be any good, you know, but uh, anyway, I think it'd be fun to do. So I um, want to just go ahead and show you show you that. So first one that they talked about here was the uh, the gum concept. And so here's uh, the, the image that they had in the book. <clears throat> Got an e-book. And so you see uh, basically uh, they are um, blocking inside zone to the left here. And uh, out here, we're running a, um, you know, if you want to call it a key two or whatever, uh, he's number one, stop blocking the corner. Number two, he's going to take one step forward and, and backpedal uh, to show his numbers to the QB. The quarterback's going to fake the uh, to the halfback inside the zone. And essentially, he's going to sprint out here uh, for either a uh, keep, he's going to keep the ball, or he's going to pitch it out here to the, uh, to the flanker. So, and, and basically, this is trying to put this strong safety in conflict because in, in this structure of the defense, he is the uh, force and flat player. So that means uh, if he sees this guy go to the flats, he's kind of supposed to go cover that. Um, but uh, if that happens, the quarterback will keep it. And if it, if he comes up to force on the quarterback, then we'll pitch it out here and we should have a two-on-one situation. And that's the kind of the, the presumption of the offense. Uh, but uh, what I want to show you is kind of how I would – uh, how our basic defensive structure uh, would defend this. And, um, you know, I think we've got a good plan in place to stop it. And it all comes down to Jimmy's and Joe's, but you got to have a good plan before you can do anything else. So pull up our uh, huddle playbook here, and you can see kind of how uh, our defensive structure is lined up. Now, uh, you might look at this and think, well, this is 4-2, but it's not really a 4-2, but it's, it, it almost is the same structure that they have. But this is – we're a uh, – Three, three team, but we will be more multiple. We're not going to stay uh, stacked up the whole time. Uh, basically, this formation, this offense formation, is a tray set, which gives uh, presents a lot of problems because it gives you a tight end, but also twin receivers out wide. So, uh, with our three, three stack, that puts our bandit here in a bind because his rule is to go down uh, and play a nine technique if he's got a tight end, but it's also to go out and play uh, twin receivers to his side. So. You know, what's our adjustment? So if we get a tray set, we're going to take our Sam backer, our stack backer, and we're going to walk him down to a nine, and we're going to bounce our backers over and put them in 30s. Okay, and so now over here on the uh, three receiver side, we're going to play what we call green, and green is just simply cover four or two, re however you want to call it. I, I don't really know. Essentially what that means is everybody – uh, our corner and our safety is reading number two. And if number two goes out before five or seven yards, then uh, the corner is going to come off and, and play the flat, and uh, the free safety will be over the top of one. If two goes vertical past seven, the free safety will be over the top of him, and the corner will take one wherever he goes. Uh, and uh, and also in this in this scenario, if one releases vertical, our bandit is going to get his hands on him. He's got to jam him. Uh, and uh, back here, our rover is going to play back on the hash, uh, and he's going to play hole, which essentially means he's got number three vertical. So if they run four verticals out of this set, uh, the tight end is going to run down the middle. The uh, rover's got to pick him up there. 
Um, and then, uh, or he's got to play the first deep crosser. So if we get an out and then this one crosses deep, well, the rover will pick him up. And uh, essentially, usually with our trips, we're going to play man to man on the backside. Uh, you know, some people may put their stud back here, and that's fine. Uh, you know, we're doing this uh, this whole scenario is basically basically assuming that everybody is about uh, the same. Yeah, this is about X's and O's right here, and not necessarily the Jimmys and the Joes. You got Julio Jones out here. Uh, well, you know, that's going to change change everything that I'm doing. So uh, anyway, that being said, uh, here I've got inside zone uh, to our right, looking at it from a defensive perspective. Uh, we're going to be slanting to the right because I don't have an overhang player over here, so my end has got to play uh, C-gap here. So uh, our nose could slant either way. I just got a slant right uh, called here. Uh, and in, in, the, in the book, Coach Rowe talks about one of the keys to this play is the why here. Uh, they got their their Y. Uh, one of the keys is him being able to block. Now, in their diagram, they've got the end or the linebacker drawn up in a seven technique, which basically gives them the exact angle that they need for the tight end to pin the end inside, and the quarterback can get outside for sweep. So, I believe by playing it th with this structure, uh, this is going to present a problem for this play because uh, the quarterback is going to fake the ball at halfback, and he, he's going to try to get outside. Well, my linebacker is going to be sitting right there. He's going to be squeezing this down block. You know, I don't really know if you get a nine what the rule is going to be. Is he going to just go ahead and try to reach this guy? I would think he would have to um, if it's going to be quarterback sweep. So if he tries to reach him, we're not going to get reached. We're going to maintain our outside uh, leverage there. Uh, and so essentially um, – the uh, outside linebacker is going to contain the quarterback on the sweep play. <clears throat> now, what that's going to do is it's going to give him a cloudy read, I guess. So when he gets here and I've got I got this play forced, he may tuck it and get here. And by this time, I would hope that, uh, you know, our linebackers have, have seen what's going on and will redirect, especially uh, this one here on the strong side uh, to play the quarterback. But uh, let's talk about the RPO game out here because the thing about it is with these RPOs, you know, these offense coordinators, they want to call the RPOs. It's a brand new toy in the toy box and in, in the toy box. So let's call it. Let's let's do it. And so what we want to do is try to play into that and, and frustrate those guys and, you know, not let it become an issue. Uh, and so we want to try to take that away. But this particular scenario here, we're playing green, which is cover four. So we're looking at two. So two's up and out very quickly. So that's my corner is looking at number two. So that tells him right now, since he's out, I know I've got to go cover that. So the uh, number one has come to stop. And so I'm fitting outside. So I cannot let the um, I cannot let the receiver get between me and the sideline. I'm going to force this play. So if it runs out here and my linebacker sitting here and he has to throw it out here, I'm going to force this play. Okay. And uh, so now my free safety is also reading to two. So two's out. So when the ball, when he sees two go out, he's going to drift back here until he sees the bubble thrown. Okay. And once he sees the stalk and he sees the bubble thrown, he's going to rally to the ball. And also now my bandit is not in conflict because – the offense is presuming that since we've got quarterback sweep, that he's in conflict, that he must be the contained guy. He's got to come up for quarterback or he's got to go out here for the sweep, uh, for the bubble. And that's just not the case. So uh, if that ball gets thrown out here, we're going to force the ball uh, back inside this block here. Now my bandit will be unblocked. My free safety will be unblocked. So we can rally to the football. We should have the RPO portion uh, of this play covered. OK, uh, let's go over that second scenario real quick. And uh, so it talked about uh, motioning in number one to a stack position. And uh, in this particular scenario, this should not affect us too much. So number one motions behind uh, number two there, uh, essentially becoming the new number two. And then he's going to uh, bubble back out and kind of give the same scenario. So all this stuff here is going to stay the same. So my linebacker is playing the nine technique. So we still should end up with that same issue. Uh, for the offense, but now, um, now what's going to happen is our corner is going to move in with the motion, but he's going to maintain outside leverage. So that's going to present a problem for this guy. If he goes and stalks here now on the corner, okay, and now we throw the ball out here, my bandit is still unblocked, all right, and my free safety is still unblocked. So I don't really think the stack position is going to affect us too much. 
but uh, uh, I think uh, we've got a, a good plan in place to stop uh, this particular uh, play. So next we'll talk about the... Okay, guys, welcome back. Part two right here. Uh, continuing on uh, defending the uh, gun concept out of uh, uh, Coach Rowe and Coach Singleton's book. Uh, again, part of the uh, OC versus DC weekend type deal. I uh, just thought it would be fun to uh, to do that. Uh, last time we talked about the, uh, the tray set and how uh, they were kind of putting us in conflict and uh, uh, using the uh, quarterback sleep tag with the... Uh, the uh, bubble by number two out there to try to, to cause a problem. Uh, the, the the next uh, item was the same concept they're doing out of a two by two set, uh, which is presenting a different um, a different issue uh, because now they're they're using motion. And whenever you start using motion, uh, that's more of a chance for you to to mess it up. Uh, and Coach Rowe talks about in the book how uh, you know a lot of offenses today have gotten away from using motion because uh, the emphasis is uh, is on tempo. And so, uh, you know, one of the things that he talks about is that that the uh, tempo everybody's playing with tempo now, and so teams are kind of used to it. And so you can't really use a lot of motion if you play with a lot of tempo. And uh, so sometimes it's, it may be better to kind of slow down a little bit and actually put some motion into it because when you motion, uh, the defense has to move. And when the defense has to move, then uh, that's where uh, problems can arise. So you can see here I've got the, uh, the play drawn up kind of in the book just like they had it, same concept here. So now we're starting out with, with a two-by-two two set with a tight end, and the tight end does give you an issue. So uh, in our 3-3 three, three stack, we're going to play uh, – since we know this is a throwing team, uh, it's not just a spread-to-run team, but this is a team that's going to throw uh, and use some RPOs and that kind of stuff. So uh, we're going to play a lot more green coverage, which is our cover four. Uh, so on this side, uh, we'll be uh, reading number two here with our corner. Uh, and I still got man-to-man on it right there. That won't be the case. Uh, but uh, we'll be uh, eyes on two and uh, play in cover four. And, again, if, if they were to snap the ball and he runs out uh, under seven yards, then the corner will take him and the rover will be over the top of number one. And uh, if the if number two is vertical past seven, the rover will be over the top of him and uh, the corner will take number one. Uh, now, let's talk about this play. This is the same play. Uh, just instead of lining this guy up over here in a tray set, they're lining him up in twins over here, and they're going to motion him behind the quarterback and snap the ball, I don't know, somewhere right around in here to where he is in a uh, a not necessarily a pitch, like a true triple option relationship, but he's going to be out here to where the quarterback can uh, flip it out here uh, if there's not a uh, if there's if there's somebody forcing him, but there's nobody covering the bubble. Uh, so you can see it's, at this moment uh, they kind of got you outnumbered if you don't move. So uh, this would take some practice. You'd have to work on this part. Uh, but essentially what we would try to do is end up the same way we were uh, if there was no motion. So if this guy was over here pre-snap, you know, we try to think about what what is our alignment for that, and our bandit would be out and our sand would be down. And so what we'd have to do is when we get this motion behind right here, uh, we'd have to do one or two things. We'd either have to uh, leave this bandit down and bump our Sam out here uh, for the uh, for the, the pitch, or we'd, we'd bump our bandit out and, and we would sprint our Sam down here uh, on the snap. And I think that's probably what we would do because he is, uh, you know, he'd be responsible for the D gap out here. Uh, and uh, so when we get motion right here, so what we'd have to do is uh, we'd have to move. So we'd have to move. So we, we know we've seen this play on film, presumably. If we haven't, it'd be a, a difficult, uh, difficult adjustment. But basically, when the when when we get motion across the quarterback, our bandit is going to bounce out, okay, and our Sam is going to bounce down. We're going to balance up. We're going to balance. So we're now there's no reason for me to be out here. I'm going to balance back inside the box here on this motion right here. Okay, and now, same thing, my, my linebacker is coming down, and he's not going to let the tight end reach him. I think. I mean, that's the key to this play. Uh, this is a QB sweep RPO. So if we don't get reached, then, then we'll, you know, that's our job. We cannot let the, the quarterback get outside. Uh, so I think if you get outside, then now you're going to have problems because uh, you don't have a force player. Uh, you don't have contain, and uh, you know so that would mean that probably if you got hooked here by the tight end, 
the quarterback will be out here now. You've got this guy in a bind, which is what the offense wants. Is he going to come to the uh, quarterback, or is he going to play out here on the flats? Uh, now, you do have the free safety is unblocked. So if that were to happen and our uh, bandit came up, then our free safety would have to rally to the pitch out here. Okay, or uh, if our bandit stayed out, our free safety would have to come up and, bait, and play the quarterback. Um, you know, so what we want to happen is when that motion occurs, our our, line, our Sam goes down and he's going to play nine technique and our bandit's going to bump out. Okay, and this turns in, this is still green on this side. So now uh, we've got a number two. He's bubbling out here. I'm getting a stop block. So I'm reading that. I'm forcing this outside. Uh, same deal right here with our, our linebacker, he cannot let uh, the, the tight end reach him. And uh, so this is going to put the uh, quarterback's read kind of in question. And uh, if he pitches it out here, I should have this play force. My bandit now can rally to the football. My free safety can rally to the football. Uh, you know, so that would be something that you would have to work on. If, if you were uh, not used to seeing that, you didn't see that on film, uh, you know, they could get you on that because you wouldn't know how to adjust to it. Um, so I, I think uh, – you know, that, that's the issue with these uh, plays is, you know, we're talking about defending this one concept now, but from week to week it can change. And then you don't really know which one is, is what. So, I mean, they may have more plays where they, they look just like this and then it's something else. So uh, you can't just assume exactly what it is. But but that's kind of how uh, we would try to play this particular set with the motion across the formation is we would, we would bump our – or linebackers, I think you'd have to. Uh, the other issue that they talked about is uh, if you you know try to put your stud over here uh, instead of trying to get the ball to your stud here, put your stud over here because a lot of teams will man up, uh, man to man a single receiver side against trips, and and, and that would be our first uh, solution is to try to do that. Now you know we may not be able to if this guy's a lot better than us, so we would have to come up with uh, some other plans in place. Uh, but also know this, that, you know, if this guy's up, we know as a defense that, well, the solution to that is to run the fade, right? So if we're in an up position, we're going to be practicing against that fade a lot, you know, or if we, we choose to play off, well, we know that the, the play here is the slant or the hitch. And so those are the things that we work on from an off position. So we know kind of what the, the offense is trying to do. And so we can work on those things. Uh, now, I mean, if you got a better player, you got a better player. So, uh, but this is a, an interesting, uh, interesting topic here, and I uh, hope to to do a few more on some of these concepts uh, for for offense, OC versus DC, DC weekend. Uh, you guys go uh, check out uh, Coach Singleton's book and Coach Rowe's book. Uh, it's uh, there's the link to it there, Coach's Clinic dot com slash coach row slash coach row and that's a link to the freemium uh, the freemium I guess content uh, the free content there but you can find the uh, link to the uh, to purchase the whole ebook uh, there's a lot of interesting stuff in there uh, uh, new uh, new things new ideas uh, for off offensive football so all right uh, I appreciate it thank you very much and uh, uh, y'all have a good day. <laughs>